My name is Blanda and welcome to Indie Bits, the show where I give my first impressions on new indie games. The world of Deck of Ashes and all beings in it have been corrupted by a powerful artifact. You must now follow the guidance of a mysterious figure called the Ash Master in order to save the land. Before starting, you must first choose between characters that play very differently from each other, what mode you want to play, which I'll talk more in depth later on, and then you'll begin your adventure and be able to freely roam a randomly generated map. Each point you move to has a different activity to do, such as a multiple choice event, a chest to unlock and get loot, a mining point where you can find specific artifacts, a full-on dungeon to explore, and of course combat encounters where you can probably find something like a rat or a slime or what the f is that? The combat in this game is card and turn based, which means that when your turn begins, you'll draw cards from your character's deck and decide which ones to use based on your limited mana pool. But the one very unique mechanic the combat has is that you have your deck pile and also an ash pile, where any card that you use ends up. This means that once you've used a card, you can no longer use it again unless you use an ability to restore it back into your deck. After the battle ends, you automatically set up camp and have a limited amount of rest point to distribute however you want. You can use them to heal yourself or restore your cards from the ash pile, which adds a cool aspect of decision making since most times you won't have enough rest points for everything. As you defeat enemies and explore around, you will earn a lot of different resources that can be spent on your base, which is shared with several NPCs that do a plethora of different things for you. To mention a few, you can craft new cards or remove old ones from your deck, buy new traits, improve your stats, and unlock certain bonuses from each each NPC. Depending on what mode you chose at the beginning, some aspects of the game's progression are different. For example, if you play the campaign, you'll go from chapter to chapter unlocking more story, and on each one you have a set amount of time to explore and get stronger before you fight the chapter's boss. But in Badlands, you skip the story, choose a straight path instead of exploring, and reach a boss at the end of the line. I think this game is excellent. The combat is fun and very strategic, the character design is great as long as you don't feel like sleeping, and I like that if you play the campaign, there are several difficulty options to select, so you can choose to not worry about dying or play in roguelike mode and lose the run if you die. I only had a few nitpicks, like that character and ability animations could be better. Because of this, on my Should You Try It scale, I give it a score of... Hell yeah!